The date was October 26, 2018. It was a Friday. Donald J. Trump was president. Stocks took a plunge, and Filmstruck announced that it was shutting down. The reaction on film Twitter was one of sheer pandemonium. You see, launched just two years earlier, Filmstruck, a streaming service from Turner Classic Movies, was touted as one for the cinephiles. Not only did it offer a stable of Hollywood classics that could make your grandparents nod off with a smile on their wrinkled old faces, it was the exclusive online host of the Criterion Collection, the home video distribution company best known for their boutique line of important classic and contemporary films, pristinely packaged and packed with supplementary features galore. In short, Filmstruck was like a gift from the gods of cinema, and now it was being taken away. The shutdown was the result of Warner Media's restructuring. They wanted to refocus their efforts on the mass market, and a niche service like Filmstruck simply wasn't that. For a brief moment in time, it seemed that all hope was lost, that having the Criterion catalog to stream was a blessing, and we simply did not deserve it. Then, on November 12th, 2018, a faint light appeared, and it grew and it grew until it burned so magnificently bright that we looked up and beheld the faces of our would-be saviors. Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, Paul Thomas Anderson, Anna Lily Amirpour, Damien Chazelle, Alfonso Cuaron, Guillermo del Toro, Leonardo DiCaprio, James Gray, Alejandro Gonzalez in Naruto, Bill Hader, Karen Kusama, Barry Jenkins, Ryan Johnson, Christopher McQuarrie, Christopher Nolan, Edgar Wright, Sean Baker, and, and, and Barbara Streisand. The filmmaking Avengers had assembled and signed a letter addressed to Warner Brothers Picture Group Chairman Toby Emmerich. Four to six days later, this happened. Does it sound all right? Yes, yes, it's fine. That's right, Warner Media and Criterion announced a standalone service arriving in the spring of the new year in the US and Canada, and there was much rejoicing. <laughs> True to their word, the Criterion Channel officially launched on April 8, 2019, with over 1,000 films from their coveted library, and a handful of other titles for which they've secured streaming rights. That night I launched the service on my TV with Amazon Fire, and it felt a little something like this. I was instantly inundated with hundreds of films I have never seen before, and several films I've been meaning to rewatch, all available with instantaneous ease. And it's not quite like Netflix or Hulu, where maybe one in ten things catches my eye. It's like being a kid in a candy store, where practically everything catches my eye. I'm sure I wasn't alone in immediately exploring what's available and adding dozens of films to my list. Oh, Scorsese's World Cinema Project. Come and see? I think I will. For all my Mankind? Hey, I guess that includes me. I really want to watch this one. I'm always in the mood for love. One hour later. Zatuichi's Revenge, Zatuichi and the Doomed Man, Zatuichi and the Chess Expert, Zatuichi's Vengeance. Like most streaming services, I imagine we'll be spending a fair amount of time simply paddling our way through the sea of options. But unlike most streaming services, the Criterion Channel doesn't stop at the films themselves. Staying true to their heritage of delivering additional content, the service also carries thousands of supplementary video, ranging from commentaries, interviews, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, and more. It's an absolute treasure trove of content, the virtual equivalent of stepping into the legendary Criterion closet itself. I can take as many of these as I want. And like Barry Jenkins, we can indulge ourselves with everything on the digital shelves. There's just too much good cinema here. For my inaugural viewing, I decided to start chipping away at one of my personal blind spots, Agnes Varda, via the channel's curated collection. Almost instantly, I found myself watching her very first film, 1956's La Pointe Court, and it looked and sounded fantastic. If it's not already clear, my initial impression of the Criterion Channel bordered on worship. But let's take a step back and consider some of the facts and pluses and minuses of the service at this point to help you decide if it's right for you. 
First of all, a monthly subscription to the Criterion channel costs $10.99 a month, while the annual plan runs at $99 a year. Whichever plan you select will go into effect after a 14-day trial, which should be a reasonable amount of time to give it a test drive and see what they have to offer. Besides your internet browser of choice, you can currently download Criterion Channel app on Apple TV 4s and newer, Amazon Fire, Roku, iOS, and Android. The iOS app is pretty slick. Personally, I subscribe to the doctrine of David Lynch when it comes to watching films on phones. Now, if you're playing the movie on a telephone, you will never in a trillion years experience the film. You'll think you have experienced it, but you'll be <clears throat> cheated. It's a, such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your fucking telephone. Get real. Still, it's nice to have options. You can download films for offline viewing and even enable background audio playback. I can't imagine why you would do that with a film itself, but for commentary tracks and interviews, it can make for a podcast-like experience. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, man. If nothing else, the smartphone app is a great way to add films to my list when you're on the go. I've mostly been using the Amazon Fire app and haven't experienced any technical issues on that device. On desktop, I've noticed it can take a few seconds for high quality to kick in, but that is by no means an issue unique to the Criterion channel. Roku users have reported some films cutting off early. To their credit, Criterion acknowledged this in the latest newsletter and has reportedly fixed the issue. Some desktop users are getting this message when connecting to an external monitor or TV. This is not so much an error as it is a form of HDCP, High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection. It seems highly unlikely that Criterion will change anything on this front, lest they fail to meet DRM guidelines. Users will either have to comply or find their own workaround. Something Criterion can and should do something about is ensuring that every film has subtitle options. While there's presumably English subtitles for every non-English language film, the same cannot be said for every English language film. Okay, I'm in your hands. One feature of the Criterion channel that might cause some confusion at first are the collections. Each film is in its own collection, which combines the film itself and any supplementaries. Each film can also be part of other collections, like a filmmaker's body of work or variations on a certain theme. Personally, I think the collections are a great idea, and I like that you can add collections themselves to my list. For example, I didn't need to add each of the Zatoichi films to my list when I could have just added the entire 25 film collection, which by the the way, I seriously cannot wait to start watching. With such a substantial catalog comes the need to adequately search through it. At launch, the Criterion channel only had a mere search bar, so unless you know precisely what you're looking for and how to spell it correctly, it's only somewhat useful. Thankfully, since then, they've added an all films view to the desktop version, which is incredibly useful. Not only can you get the full list of films currently on the service, it has filtering and sorting to fine tune your search results. For example, let's say I wanna get a list of all the US documentaries on the service. I simply select documentary from the list of genres, select United States from the list of countries, and apply. I can then sort those results even further, by year for instance, and get a respectable list of films from Robert Flaherty's Nanook of the North to Kristen Johnson's Camera Person. For some bizarre reason, there's currently not a way to add directly from here to my list, and you have to click on each individual title to do so. And unfortunately, the All Films view has yet to be added to the apps. It would be nice to see some popular or trending carousels or a list of recommended films based on what I've been watching or what I like. Speaking to the latter, the Criterion channel currently has no way of knowing what you like. Adding a simple thumbs up or thumbs down option or preferably a five star rating scale could go a long ways for their own algorithms and the user's own record keeping. This is one of several quality of life features you'll find on Mubi, for example, another niche streaming service aimed directly at film buffs. As far as I've seen, Mubi is something of the gold standard when it comes to the user experience of a boutique streaming service on desktop. Not only can you rate a film, you can review it. You can see the average rating for any given film and read others' reviews. You can like and or comment on those reviews. You can follow other users and check out their profiles for all their reviews and all their lists. And yes, you can make custom lists. Additionally, each film's page has room for information on awards and festivals, cast and crew, articles, critic reviews, user reviews and lists, and related films. 
I promise, this video is not sponsored by Mubi. I just think the UI is exceptional, and the Criterion channel could only benefit from studying its example as both a way to evolve itself and involve us. It's this level of interactivity that could elevate the platform from a streaming service to a full-on film community. Imagine something similar to Letterboxd, but rooted in all things Criterion. Alright, that's probably enough wishlisting for the purposes of this video. After all, the Criterion channel is not even a month old at this point, and hopefully has a long life of continual updates and improvements. First and foremost, it would be great to see Criterion continue fixing any technical issues, releasing apps for additional devices such as Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and of course, bringing this service to those outside of North America. While acknowledging that the Criterion channel still has a long ways to go, I have to applaud them for everything they're already doing right. My personal experience has been almost entirely positive. For my money, this is easily the new go-to streaming service for cinephiles at this moment. It's rare when quality and quantity can coexist in equal measure. Are you a subscriber of the Criterion channel? If so, I would love to hear your impressions of the service so far and what you've been watching. What features would you love to see implemented down the road? Please join the conversation in the comments below, and if you have any additional tips, thoughts, and or questions, please chime in as well. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and subscribe to Cineflect for Criterion-related videos in addition to film reviews, lists, video essays, and more. Clicking on the bell beside the subscribe button should let you know every time I upload a video. For Cineflect, I'm J.S. Lewis, thanks for watching.